They don't want to solve problems. They just want to keep taking your money because it keeps them in their cushy position of power whilst everyone else suffers. No evidence snap curfews will solve Alice Springs' problems, advocate for Indigenous children says. Hold on a minute. My spidey bullshit senses are tingling, especially in my ass, and I like it. A three-night stay-at-home order was issued on Monday for the Northern Territory community after a spate of violent incidents, including a brawl involving 80 people and a knife attack on a 42-year-old woman. Both residents and visitors are subject to the 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. restrictions, with people only able to enter the curfew zone for purposes such as work, attending an event, or seeking safety or medical treatment. Police on Tuesday said they were pleased with the first night of the policy, except for the theft of three vehicles from a business on Garn Road outside the curfew zone. The Northern Territory Police Commissioner, Michael Murphy, said police were also exploring limits on liquor supply. This isn't a policing solution. This is a short-term relief measure, he told the ABC. But Catherine Little, the CEO of the Secretariat of National Aboriginal and Islander Child Care, said there was no evidence that snap curfews like this work. No evidence that snap curfews. Curfews like this work really, Miss Liddell. I find that fascinating that you would say that. And that's why we'll put a pin in this and come back to it later. Having curfews in a toolkit for police to use is not a sensible response. Again, we'll come back to this. You increase punitive measures, what you get is more crime. Little distinguished the three-day lockdown imposed by police from the genuine circuit breaker declared by the Northern Territory government in March, which she said responded to an absolutely extraordinary collision of events where children were at serious risk or serious harm. The Minister for Indigenous Australians, Linda Burney, grifter, said Alice Springs needed long-term solutions and pointed to the federal government's four-year package of $250 million to improve community safety and services in Central Australia. It's so funny, that, isn't it? Of the billions that we spend each year as Australians, as Australian taxpayers, on Indigenous affairs, yet nothing seems to be done. Nothing seems to be getting better. As a matter of fact, everything seems to be getting worse because there are grifters within the Australian political elite who say that we're going to make things better, we're going to make things so much better for the Indigenous community whilst collecting a massive paycheck because they have no incentive to make things better because we... Just keep on paying them. I once did the figures. The amount of money that we spend as a taxpayer per year equates to around about $30,000 for each Indigenous person here in Australia every year, $30,000. And I keep asking the question to the people who are watching this who are Indigenous, have you seen a $30,000 a year improvement in your life personally? No, no. But I'm sure Linda Burney has. Anyway, we need to keep the politics out of this. The issues in Alice Springs have been a long time in the making, she told ABC Radio on Tuesday. And how long have you been involved, Linda? Little said there had not been visible progress since a meeting between the Northern Territory and federal government and community organisation in response to March's youth curfew and questioned how the funding was hitting the ground. Yeah, we all want to know that too. Oh boy, do we want to know that. There seems to be a lack of transparency and accountability to the community, she said. SNAICC said at the time this meeting should have been the first step in designing community-led solutions to issues that have been decades in the making. This does not seem to have happened well. That's the government for you, isn't it? The National Indigenous Australians Agency was contacted for comment. 
The Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, Jacinta Namp Jimpa Price, said curfews were really only a temporary measure and predicted this, the present curfew would uh, be extended beyond the three days originally set. Uh, I have no doubt there'll be another snap curfew because the underlying problems, excuse me, are being fixed through a curfew. Price, who was previously the Alice Springs Deputy Mayor, said boarding facilities should be built for the town's children. These kids come from town camps and they're some of our most marginalised. More needs to be done basically to improve camps, town camps. The children that are vulnerable, they should be allowed to grow up in environments that aren't harmful for them and that are dysfunctional. See, here's the funny thing, right? Jacinta Nampajimpa Price has lived there. She's lived in these experiences. She knows what works and what doesn't work. And what do you notice about our political elite and their treatment of Jacinta Nampajimpa Price here? Yeah, they hate her because she's proposing actual solutions, which means that the money eventually will dry up because people's lives will improve. See, when you fix a problem, there's no need to sit there with your hand out asking for more money because the problem's fixed. That's the current Indigenous Affairs Minister, whoever it is, Linda Burney, that's her main grift. She just says, give me more money until I fix it. Well, you're not fixing anything. Yeah, but because I haven't got enough money. Okay, but where's the money going right now? Shut up, you're racist. Ba, 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 ba. Little warned that the boarding facilities were best considered an interim safety measure rather than a long-term solution. You've always got to be careful with boarding facilities, particularly when talking about Aboriginal children, because then you start erring into concepts like residential care, and that's a whole different story. The curfew announcement comes as NATO Week celebrations kick off in the town of about 25,000 people, attracting about 5,000 visitors, visitors from across the Northern Territory, Western Australia and South Australia. The emergency declaration was made using new laws passed by the Territory Parliament in May that let police commissioner impose a three-day curfew that can be extended to seven days if the police minister approves. Now, we'll just go back to this. No evidence that snap curfews like this work. Is that so? Because I'm so confused. See, in the Northern Territory, in places like Alice Springs, when there's people on the streets actively harming each other, beating the crap out of each other, stealing each other. See, having a curfew, that's, that's not going to solve the problem. But, but, when there is, when there is a virus that has a 99% survival rate, no, 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 that's when curfews work, right? When you can walk around in the outside not doing anything, then you'll get a massive police response because of the, of the deadly virus with a 99.9% survival rate. That's when curfews and lockdowns work, right? Look at all these reasonable measures taken against the public for daring to go out and protest the government. Then the police are out in full force. But when you have bands of roving gangs in Alice Springs terrorising the place, no, see, the government then tells the police to stand down, pull back on their resources, tells them to let them go, tells them if you arrest the perpetrators, then you are a racist. Do you see the absolute bullshit, double standard, lying, hypocrisy? Keep going, whatever you want to call it, from our political betters. They're so full of sh. They don't want to solve problems. They just want to keep taking your money because it keeps them in their cushy position of power whilst everyone else suffers. Wait, right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the channel and this video. So follow me up there. Do all the things down there. Are we done? 
Yeah, we're done.